Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Joint Economic Committee uh, hearing titled The First Step Toward Reducing Red Tape, Better Analysis. Uh, too often congressional hearings are given titles that merely attract attention. But I believe the title for today's Joint Economic Committee hearing accurately describes what our witnesses are here to talk about and what we should take to heart, namely that the first step toward reducing red tape and achieving our regulatory goals is better analysis. Every member of Congress, Congress recognizes the economic justification and the constitutional authority under the Commerce Clause and Article I, Section 8 of the U.S. Constitution for balanced Federal regulation to protect public health and safety, preserve our environment, and prevent fraud of all kinds. At the same time, many members of Congress also recognize that Federal regulation has become overly burdensome and costly to job creators and the economy alike. Some regulations, regrettably, are even counterproductive. As the volume of Federal regulation has grown, regulation has done less to advance its stated goals and imposed ever more costs. These costs include, include slower economic growth, higher uncertainty that inhibits business investment and job creation, foregone product and process innovation, a lessening in the international competitiveness of American businesses, and staggering incomes for hardworking American families. Unnecessarily burdensome regulation also aggravates our country's long-term fiscal imbalance by inhibiting the natural growth of Federal revenues under existing tax law. Consider the following facts. In 2013, the Federal Government issued 3,659 final rules contained on 26,417 pages, a record number in the Federal Register. Including proposed rule, the Federal Register finished last year with 70, over 79,000 pages. Four of the five highest regulatory page counts have occurred during President Obama's administration, the all-time record being over 81,000 in 2010. Mr. Wayne Cruz, the author of 10,000 Commandments, an annual snapshot of the Federal Regulatory State, estimates that the annual, uh, overall annual cost of regulatory compliance to be $1.9 trillion, about equal to the economy of Australia, Canada, or Italy. Mr. Cruz estimates that the U.S. households face an annual hidden regulatory tax of nearly $15,000. In last year's draft report to Congress on the benefits and the costs of Federal regulation, the Office of Management and Budget stated that executive agencies and independent regulatory agencies promulgated a combined total of 68 major rules during 2012, each of which, as you know, have an impact of $100 million or more. Alarmingly, OMB presented a cost-benefit analysis for only 14 uh, of those 68 major rules. Looking longer term, during the decade ending in 2012, Federal agencies published over 37,000 final regulatory rules, with OMB presenting cost-benefit analysis for only 115 of them. That is three-tenths of one percent, meaning only three in every 1,000 regulations were subject to a complete analysis of their effects on the U.S. economy, job creators, and families. For a nation seeking a smarter, more efficient government, that's just shameful. America's regulatory system should be designed to achieve the greatest good at the least cost. Both Republicans and Democrats should be able to agree on that principle. Smart, effective regulation should, should seek to reduce uh, rates of illness, mortality, and pollution, but not by reducing economic growth, job creation, the incomes of hardworking Americans out of neglect or just disregard. Safety and security must not come at the cost of stagnation, unemployment, and lower incomes that are robbed from the middle class. Yes, there will be trade-offs, but too often our Federal regulatory system pursues singular objectives, blind to the unintended consequences of its methods, and indeed often doesn't even focus on realizing the intended results. We need a better way, a 21st century way to sift through regulations both proposed and existing, transparently identify their true costs, and find the least costly, the least intrusive way to achieve the goals on which we all agree. We cannot do that without better analysis. My colleagues, Senator Dan Coates and I, have introduced the Sound Regulation Act to improve the regulatory process through better analysis. The Sound Regulation Act would first expand accurate cost-benefit analysis to all Federal regulatory agencies, beyond the executive branch agencies, to the independent ones as well. 
and close loopholes that allow some Federal agencies to skirt the requirement for objective economic analysis. It would end agency bias and establish more public transparency by requiring agencies to clearly identify the nature and significance of the market failure, other, other problem that, necess that necessitates regulatory action, establish an achievable objective for the regulatory action, and, public and publish for public comment in advance the method and process for objectively weighing the costs and benefits of the proposed regulation. It would encourage more innovative solutions by requiring the development and evaluation of the costs and benefits of at least three regulatory options ranked by costs from lowest to highest, and justify the, require justifying the choice of any option that is not the least cost of, uh, method of achieving the objective. Finally, it would uh, require reviewing existing regulations on a timely basis to determine the success and cost of the regulation in the real world. Sound Regulatory Act would not dictate solutions or how to achieve them. Instead, it would provide a better framework for rulemaking by Federal regulators so the regulations work more effectively and at least cost the American economy. I believe that all members of Congress and both chambers and both parties can ascribe to this goal. We have many ideas on how best to move forward on smart regulations. Senator Coates and I have one. There are others. That is the, the topic of the discussion today. And with that, I look forward to the testimony of today's witness. Uh, I would uh, uh, yield to the Vice Chairman, uh, uh, Senator Klobuchar, for her opening.